Okay, so if you have been uh, watching any of my 308 videos, my other 308 videos, you ha have probably seen that this thing, the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 10, is shooting two distinct groups. Two distinct groups. All right, if you haven't seen it, uh, go ahead and watch this video here. This is the last one uh, that I shot. I'll wait. Okay, so lots of theories uh, that the barrel nut is loose, that uh, the veracity of the rounds as the bolt as the bolt strips the rounds from the magazine and feeds it into the chamber, that that motion is causing the upper to torque one way or the other as it's stripping and feeding into the chamber. Uh, okay. Um, what that did give me pause, though, was because all of, all of my zeroing videos with the 308 have been with these Magpul magazines, which are, of course, plastic, right? So I'm in the Mojave Desert, and it's um, pretty hot. Right now it's about 8 in the morning, and it's already in the mid-80s, uh, only due to get hotter. So... Is the heat affecting these, causing flimsy structure, and then, as people have claimed, as the bolt strips the round into the chamber, this plastic, which would be normally rigid uh, at normal operating temperatures, um, is giving a lot of flex, which is allowing the bolt and the, the motion of the bullet to affect the upper as it's getting seated into the chamber. I don't know. So I've got these uh, DPMS magazines, uh, which are a little bit more uh, resilient in heat. So I'm going to do a comparison of that. Then I've al we've also heard that uh, it's because the barrel isn't free float, right? So here with the Magpul, I, I believe this is the Embus handguard. Uh, that because it has contact with the barrel right here at the at the barrel nut slash D ring and then right here behind the gas port that it isn't allowing the barrel to the boof go like this as uh, the bullet leaves the leaves the chamber through the barrel uh, and out so I'm like okay sure but why is it going laterally you know it's like the rounds are going this way and then this way and then this way and then this way and not very extravagantly you know so is the uh, barrel nut loose we'll find out so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try and sling some rounds with the plastic at a zero target then I'm gonna sling rounds with the steel slash aluminum DPMS magazines see if there's a difference then I'm gonna go to the shop and I'm going to replace this with a free float handguard come back out and sling some rounds and again see if there's a difference so right now I'm gonna lock and load here now I am using the federal uh, 175 grain I think it's a uh, GM 302 uh, I'll roll in the uh, the box of ammunition but 175 grain federal uh, which I had, I got a good zero with this thing, which I didn't capture on film, but I got a good zero with this particular ammo. It, it was a pretty hot day though, so let's see what happens. Going for uh, center mass, center mass target. Wow. <laughs>
Okay, so kind of weird. A lot of them way off to the right. Uh, I guess one flyer down to the lower left. Uh, nothing real conclusive yet. Although what we notice now is that the spread of rounds is at an angle. Not straight across like in the other videos. So let's try with the DPMS. I haven't made any adjustments to the uh, site yet. So, you know, different weather conditions. Uh, there's like no wind, so my zero could be off again. So, um, got to take it with a grain of salt. So, all right. Be shooting at the upper right target. And I do have, although I'm not very good at these, but I got some squeeze bags here to try and stabilize all right, the shoulder stock. I have more success when I just shoot AR style like this. Um, but sometimes, you know, a different technique, all right, is required. So, but I'm not, I'm not trained that well on this. Anyway, let's do this. All right, upper right hand target. Just had a misfire. Another one, something's going on. It's not, uh, it's like it's not going in all the way. It's not seating. Huh. All right, so now I've got an issue with the trigger. So recoil is not, recoil is not, Recoil is not entirely cocking the trigger again. That's what was wrong with this uh, with this round. Let me see here. All right, so uh, immediate determination is that the group is in a more of a consistent area, but it, now I'm experiencing, and that's with the DPMS mag, so that's good, uh, but now I'm experiencing twice now after, uh, after locking an, uh, an ejection, the trigger wasn't cocked. That happened twice. So is somehow 
I mean, it's strip. It's an it's blowback is enough to, and the spring is pushing the bolt back enough to strip and feed another round, but it's not coming back far enough to recock the trigger. So that makes me wonder now: is the barrel loose, and is part of the concussion escaping from this looseness? This is part of the gas from detonation in the chamber escaping here, not just all the way out the barrel. So I'm anxious now to get this thing. I'm not even gonna mess with the zero. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the shop in the process of installing that uh, that apex handguard to free float the barrel. Uh, we might get this barrel tightened and that might solve everything right there. Another Another story is I found months later, months later, um, as I was uh, cleaning this after uh, a timeout at the range, I discovered that the, uh, the muzzle brake was loose. So it hadn't even engaged the crush washer. So I wonder if, if that's what's going on here. It's very interesting. So let me pack it up, get this thing to the shop, and I will get back to you.